A mitad de los años 50, Leon Festinger y su colega Merrill Carlsmith dirigieron un experimento clásico mediante el cual asignaban unas tareas muy aburridas a unos estudiantes. Después, un miembro del equipo de Festinger formulaba una petición a los estudiantes. Uh, now I have a somewhat unusual request to make of you. Uh, the next subject is waiting right outside, but the fellow who ordinarily gives the spiel uh, isn't here. Uh, I wonder if you could possibly take his place. As a matter of fact, we figure we'll be needing someone in the future, so I'd like to offer you a $20 retainer and have you remain on call for us. Uh, would that be all right? $20? That'd be fine. A la mitad de los estudiantes se les asignó esta tarea y este fue el grupo que recibió 20 dólares por mentir y decir que el experimento era divertido. La otra mitad recibió un dólar por mentir. La disonancia cognitiva surgió del hecho que se sabía que el experimento era en realidad aburrido y un dólar no era cantidad suficiente para mentir. Muchos de los del grupo de un dólar se convencieron de que el experimento era divertido después de tomar su decisión para reducir la disonancia entre sus creencias prioritarias y su comportamiento. Acabaron creyéndose una gran mentira por un incentivo insignificante. Por otro lado, los del grupo de 20 dólares no sufrieron la disonancia, puesto que se sintieron a gusto mintiendo solo por dinero. That the man who is paid most would have the highest motivation for enthusing over the dull task and would be most sold on it himself. Cognitive dissonance theory leads to an exactly opposite prediction. The man who is paid $20 knows that the task is dull, but he also knows that he had sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. Did you enjoy working on the manual task? Well, it uh, really wasn't too enjoyable. In fact, it was rather boring. How about the man who has paid one dollar? He knows the task is dull, but he has two discrepant thoughts. He also knows that he did not have sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. For him, there is dissonance. Time after time, we have seen what follows. He reduces the dissonance by changing his opinion about the dullness of the task. Did you enjoy working on the manual task? Yes, I enjoyed it. Would you like to participate in such an experiment again? Yes, I think I would like to. Any time there is insufficient reward, there will be dissonance. The general principle seems to be that people come to believe in and to love the things they have to suffer.